Welcome to yet another video for MA3D1, the Warwick Max module on fluid dynamics. This video is about derived potential flows. Here I'm going to continue our discussion of elementary potential flows, but unlike the previous ones where I just wrote down the potential, I'm going to give some rationale behind the derivation of the next few that uh, I'm going to present in this video. The topics in this video are covered in these two subsections of the notes. So let's start with a brief recap. We saw three uh, elementary potential flows given by the three potentials that are written here, the uniform flow, the point source and the point vortex. And today we are going to construct the point dipole and extend that logic to um, induce higher multiples. So uh, let's begin. The point dipole. Now the thinking behind constructing the point dipole is as follows. Here I have the complex plane. This is the x-axis and this is the y-axis. What I want to do is uh, put a source uh, at a distance which I will call epsilon and put a sink, a point sink also a distance epsilon from the origin. The origin is some arbitrary point that we have decided to call our, uh, the origin of our coordinate system, right? So these are this, this is just a source and a sink that are separated by a distance to epsilon. We have taken the line uh, on which they lie to be our x-axis and we've taken the center of that to be our origin. Like that's really the way to say it. Now, it so happens that uh, we can construct a potential from superposing potentials. Right? That is, we can say now W of Z is Q over 2 pi log of Z minus epsilon. That's this one. Minus q over 2 pi, the minus because it's a point sink log of z plus epsilon. That's that one. And this would be a regular dipole of point sources. But what does one mean by point dipole? We want to take the limit. Now I need some, let me make some space to write the limit. I want to take the limit as epsilon approaches zero. And in this case, you can see what happens as epsilon approaches zero, the point source comes arbitrarily close to the point sink and the two flows will cancel each other. Well, unless we do something to retain the strength of the flow, the flow is just going to get weaker and weaker and weaker as epsilon goes to zero. So what, in order to maintain the strength of the flow, we are going to insist that Q becomes stronger and stronger and stronger as uh, epsilon becomes zero. And the uh, particular way in which we want Q to become stronger is inversely proportional to the distance between the point uh, source and the sink. Here, so this is like redefining the strength of the source, right? So D is the strength of the point dipole. Now, this limit is now not too difficult to evaluate. W of Z is limit epsilon goes to zero. You see Q over two pi, but instead of Q, I'm going to substitute D. D over two pi comes out common. Log of Z minus epsilon. 
minus the log of z plus epsilon and divided by 2 epsilon d over 2 pi is independent of epsilon so it comes out this d over 2 pi comes out of the limit and what is rem rem what remains in the limit is just the derivative of log at z so we get d over 2 pi accounting for the sign minus d over 2 pi z now let me just check in my notes the order in which I have them I, I have it the other way around in the notes so which means this is my point sink and this is my point source that means I must have a plus sign there and a minus sign there so minus there and plus there so this becomes a plus so now that is the potential corresponding to a point dipole what does the flow look like now the flow doesn't exactly cancel each other right that was the whole point of constructing this and plus we have got a non-zero potential it will lead to a non-zero flow so let's see what the flow looks like uh, so we have let's decompose this potential into its real and imaginary part and in this case we can use Cartesian coordinates z is x plus i y that will suffice we can also use polar coordinates actually yeah, let's see what happens in polar coordinates z is r e to the i theta so we have d over 2 pi r e to the minus i theta and from that it follows that the real part is d cos theta divided by 2 pi r and the imaginary part is minus d sine theta over 2 pi r well this is all well and good we can also now calc we can also from this derive the velocity u radial in polar coordinates is d phi dr is minus d cosine theta over 2 pi r squared and u theta is 1 over r d phi d theta is minus d sine theta over 2 pi r square still doesn't tell you what this flow is what does this flow do right let's try finding the streamlines so this is the velocity and the streamlines oh, sorry derived the streamlines are curves of constant stream function so they are psi equals constant now we should pick some value for the constant and uh, I would say let's pick d sine theta over 2 pi r equals d over 4 pi c this is c is really the constant that i have introduced but then uh, as you vary c you get different streamlines and d over 4 pi is just for convenience for analytical convenience right. so this simplifies to r equals c sine theta with a 2 r equals 2 c sine theta hmm. It is a little, it's only a little difficult to see that this is an equation of a circle, but uh, let me write it 
let me take uh, yeah let's take squares on both sides no let's not take squares on both sides let's write it in cartesian coordinates now sine theta is y divided by square root of x squared plus y squared so this equation becomes x squared plus y squared minus 2cy equals 0 or x squared plus if I complete the square on the left hand side with the y I need to add a c squared on both sides and you'll see that's the equation of a circle now there is nothing special about uh, the equipotential lines one can use the same sort of logic to derive the equipotential lines and they will be given by x squared x plus c squared plus y squared equals c squared they'll be given by that and I'll leave that uh, say it's the exact same process in the interest of time I'll leave that as an exercise for the viewer so if I draw these now let me erase uh, no let me draw a different picture here blue are the streamlines so they are circles that are a distance C away on the y-axis depending on whether you pick C positive or negative if I choose this as the center I'll get that circle I choose this as the center I will get that circle so because the point source which way is the point source? The point source is on that side. So that means our flow will go like this. And uh, the equipotential lines will be circles like that. So that's the that's what the flow looks like. You might also ask, well, can uh, there there are several things that one might ask at this point, and it's good uh, to ask. One, can D be complex? And the answer is yes. This potential that we have derived here you'll see that D can be complex but all that it does it changes uh, if D is a complex number then it changes the uh, axis of uh, the dipole in this picture the dipole is oriented along the x-axis if D was complex then whatever the argument of D is will give us the angle along which the dipole will be oriented for example if d was uh, if the argument of d was pi over 4 then our dipole will be oriented around that axis and that will just rotate the whole streamline pattern the second question is what about point dipole of point vertices if we construct a dipole out of point vertices instead of point sources what what will change I go back here and instead of point sources if I have point 
vertices all that will change is this q will become a i gamma and this q will become a i gamma i'll have to substitute instead of q i would have to substitute i gamma and therefore there will be a factor of uh, uh, this uh, dipole strength will become purely imaginary but that's just a special case of question one can d be complex if we have a dipole of point vertices d becomes purely imaginary that means uh, we have a point dipole that is oriented along the y-axis the whole pattern is just shifted 90 degrees and if you remember the flow because of a point vortex is the same as the flow because of a point source except that the velocity is rotated 90 degrees at every point and this is sort of a result uh, related to that so you get the same point dipole flow from a dipole of point vertices but rotated 90 degrees so you don't get a separate is somehow an independent flow pattern okay. and question three what is this flow so to answer that I'm going to evaluate this velocity at r equals Mm. square root of d mm. I can evaluate it at any a at r equals a some radius u r is d over 2 pi a squared cosine theta u theta is d over 2 pi a squared sine theta is there a minus sign for both of them yes negative negative now let us compare this to uh, motion of uniform motion of a uniform motion of a circle with speed u along the x axis now such a circle the speed will be given by u e x hat and its normal component, uh, mm -hmm. the normal, because it's a circle, the normal would be in the radial direction, u e x hat dot e r hat is u cosine theta, and the tangential direction, u e x hat dot e theta hat is u sine theta. If d is 2 pi a squared u with a negative sign, then you see that ur is equal to vr, no penetration condition. This is the boundary condition which says that the normal velocity of the fluid matches with the normal velocity of the body is satisfied and u theta is not equal to v theta because there is a negative sign that is off. This implies that no slip condition which states that the tangential component of the velocity of the fluid 
matches the tangential velocity of a body is not satisfied. So somehow this point dipole represents the flow that is set by, let me draw a cylinder here, sorry a circle. So if I draw a circle which is located at the origin If this circle is to translate with speed u along the x-axis then choosing this as the dipole strength relating to the speed and the size of the circle one can satisfy the no penetration condition using a point dipole but one cannot satisfy the no slip condition this goes back to the the greater uh, issue with potential flow that with potential flow because potential flow satisfies the Laplace equation for the potential del square phi equals zero we can only specify either the value of phi or the normal gradient of phi on the boundary but not both and because of that we can satisfy one or the other condition and normally it's far more important to satisfy the no penetration condition because we will see later that the violation of the no slip condition can be corrected later uh, when we treat when we consider boundary layers the no slip condition can be fixed at that stage but the no penetration condition, this is the time to fix it, to apply it. So when a, uh, when a, a circle in two dimensions translates with a uniform speed, this is the flow that it generates. And finally, now let's get back to higher multiples. And this is just a generalization of the point dipole that we made from a point source. We put one point source next to another and uh, took the limit as their distance went to zero while their strength went to infinity, inversely proportional to the distance. And uh, we got a potential. Essentially, uh, the potential for a dipole, the complex potential for a dipole, was the derivative of the potential for a point source, right? That is what happened. So we can now generalize this. We can say, uh, we can construct point quadruples. Let me write point. Point quadruples is a dipole of point dipoles point dipole of point dipoles sorry and one can also construct a point octopole point dipole you guessed it of point quadruples and so on so the potential that you will get out of this will be w of z will be uh, q over 2 pi z squared for octopoles will be w of z I'll just write uh, proportional to because the proportionality constant is the strength 
and the strength can be any constant 1 over z cubed and so on so now using the principle of superposition that we just saw that if you have multiple potentials available to you you can you can linearly superpose them uh, we have the most general potential from this sort of multiples is a zero log z plus a1 over z plus a2 over z square and so on this is the point source and if a0 is complex then it could also have a contribution from a point vortex a combination of the two this is the point dipole this is the point quadrupole and so on this is called the multipole expansion and the flow uh, generated by the motion of any finite any finite body uh, immersed in a fluid if the fluid is static at infinity you can see that if I find that the velocity from each by taking the derivative uh, by taking the gradient then I can uh, then that velocity decays far away so if the fluid velocity is static far away the fluid is static far away but uh, there is some body immersed in a fluid which is causing motion then the potential flow that such a body would generate by satisfying the no penetration condition on the surface of its body on the surface uh, of this body will be given by one such multiple expansion it will correspond to some choice of these constants a0 a1 a2 and so on. we already saw an example of this flow generated by the motion of a circle at a uniform speed u is given by uh, the dipole being minus 2 pi a squared u which means there is no a0 there is an a1 equal to 2 pi a squared u and then there will be factors of 2 pi right so d over 2 pi there so a squared u minus a squared u example a1 equals minus a squared u corresponds to flow generated by a uniformly translating circle and you can imagine if I add a little bit of the point quadrupole then that would correspond to either a circle deforming as it is moving or a body of a shape slightly different from a circle translating and so on in any case if you have an arbitrary body that is uh, moving in some form whilst it is deforming the potential flow that it generates can be written in the most general sense uh, in this series form and uh, while this is useful to know uh, and it is used like this would be one of the techniques to solve for a potential flow to figure out these coefficients corresponding to whatever situation you have we are going to now exploit another technique uh, to to generate uh, many more potential flows they will all fall within this type they can be written as this series but sometimes their representation is easier in, in other forms okay. so with this 
we conclude the video on the derived potential flows. Uh, the next topic we are going to consider is a superposition of potential flows to uh, derive uh, complex potentials for flow external flow past uh, bodies. Mm. The series expansion, the multiple expansion we derive, that is one way of writing the potential. The potential is in fact unique, but there are different ways of writing the same potential. And so we are going to find uh, other easier ways of writing the potential depending on the situation. So I will see you in the next video or the next live session.